welcome to the Tanglewood Garden. Um, the Tanglewood Garden was started shortly after Chris and I moved into Tanglewood. Um, Dr. Welsh approached us and said, hey, would you like to have a garden in Tanglewood? They, she was uh, working on a class um, through the honors program where students designed the garden and designed what was going to be planted and so we said sure we're up for it. Uh, Dr. Welsh knew of my dad who was a great gardener and um, also a, a faculty member here at Westchester University so when she approached me we felt a great connection with putting in a garden here kind of to honor him as well and along with that um, Dr. Welsh knew that he was a wonderful asparagus farmer, and so we put in some asparagus also to honor my dad. So here at the Tanglewood Organic Garden at Westchester University, we have been participating in the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society program thanks to Dr. Ashley Delshed. And so we get seedlings and seeds from them and this garden is for faculty, staff, and students, and the Fiorentinos, to enjoy. And so we get all the interesting varieties of things. Yes. <laughs> uh, the stuff that's planted at South Campus, which you'll hear about later, is sort of the more, what we would call recognizable varieties of fruits and vegetables. And so here we have red cabbage and um, purple peas sometimes and purple beans and all that kind of stuff. So I guess in any garden, the challenge is managing the weeds. And you know, weeds are just plants that you don't really want in your garden right now. They're not necessarily bad, but managing weeds is a big deal. How do we manage weeds this time, Tyler? Before we lay down the mulch that we actually have here, we actually lay down a layer of cardboard before we put down all the rest of the soil. And that'll help mitigate the weeds from coming up and spreading up into the area that we wanted to keep kind of separated from the rest of the yard space. We have had a, an issue with uh, mitigating water runoff from the president's re residence, uh, especially with the mulch running off actually into the yard. But we're working on different solutions to try to keep that within the bed and try to keep the garden looking as pristine and perfect as possible. And so, using other resources to support our garden, we are using bamboo. We got bamboo from South Campus, and that's always fun going under the garden and chopping out that invasive plant and getting it all ready and then bringing it in and using it for the tomatoes plant structure, for trellising our eggplant and our peppers, and it's biodegradable and so it it's a really good way to use your local resources in your garden to sustainably manage your landscape. Hi, I'm Kate Stewart. Um, we are in the campus pigment and dye garden which is just outside of the EO Bull Center for the Arts. Um, it's a it's in its roughly like about the third year of uh, growing. Um, and it, it really was a project that uh, was a dream project for me um, that came about because I had done a, um, a Wednesday afternoon research lecture on my uh, research, creative research and practice, um, which involves um, uh, historic materials in the arts. So. Um, I shared processes about ink making from collecting black walnuts and um, uh, uh, processing of woad plants for um, indigo pigment. Um, so Josh Braid, who is the campus um, grounds manager, uh, was at, luckily for me at that um, research lecture, so he asked me if I wanted to do a pigment garden. and. You know, I jumped at the chance. So we are growing a variety of um, pigment, well, plants that actually produce pigment. Many of them are um, plants that have been used for centuries. Um, so plants like matter, matter was one of the original um, 
plants that produced a red dye um, that was used in religious ceremonies and um, uh, art, uh, paintings, illuminated manuscripts, um, and also fashion and clothing dyeing of, of, um, from thousands of years ago. And finding things in our natural environment that we can use and eliminate our carbon footprint in terms of um, you know, going out and buying the materials um, that, you know, these processes have been around forever. Um, so I sort of came to that from a gardening perspective because I am an avid gardener. I have gardens at home. I love growing my own food, vegetables, um, uh, produce, everything is really kind of a magical experience for me. I just love it. Welcome to the South Campus Garden at Westchester University. Uh, my name is Ashley Delshot. I'm a faculty member at the university. Uh, this garden was built in 2014 with the help of students in my environmental politics and policy course, and as well as students who participate in an alternative break program that I lead that's devoted to urban gardening and we work a lot with gardens in Philadelphia as well as gardens locally. Um, our purpose is a little different from the other gardens at the university. We're growing with the primary purpose of producing vegetables to combat food insecurity, particularly among college students at the university. We also donate a lot to the Westchester Food Cupboard as well as a few other um, venues um, in the region to make sure that this produce is going to really good use in our community. In terms of the vegetables that we grow here, we grow with the purpose of promoting what we call food sovereignty. So uh, we choose the vegetables we grow according to the vegetables in particular that the student population is interested in having access to and being able um, to eat but may not be able to afford or regularly access because there aren't any grocery stores that are easy to access from campus and so we usually work with the university's resource pantry um, yearly to gauge interest in the students that are using the pantry and what produce they're particularly excited about. Um, that typically means that we're growing varieties that are kind of easy to recognize. So we grow orange carrots instead of rainbow carrots. We grow red round tomatoes instead of yellow tomatoes so that they're things that students feel comfortable with, they know what they are, and they know how to use them. Um, we do try to grow um, three seasons out of the year for the most part. We've experimented some with cold frames that will allow us to grow throughout the winter season some of the leafy greens but in the springtime uh, we are usually growing lots of lettuce the students love lettuce it's something they easily recognize and they can use they don't have to cook it so it's perfect um, easy for them to make use of we also grow a lot of kale um, in the springtime most of the time we have strawberries we're kind of in a transition period this year with some new strawberries that are just coming in but strawberries of course are always popular with students carrots and some of the other greens like spinach are also popular during the springtime. So welcome to the Organic Garden at Westchester University's North Campus location. We are part of the Office of Sustainability efforts on campus to create a learning landscape here at Westchester University for our students, staff, faculty and our greater community. And the harvest here is for our community. This is a very active location on campus. Students, staff, and faculty are always walking through and, and we lure them in with some peas and then uh, send them home with something. And if they want to learn how to garden, they can volunteer here. Our garden interns, uh, Tyler Montgomery, is keeping up our sign-up genius. So if you want to come work in the garden, you can find that sign-up genius. And we welcome you here. And you'll learn all about what goes on here and maybe even be inspired to start either a container garden or uh, in-bed garden or actual in-ground garden. We do all of that here. <music>